An elimination game for Georgia, and the dogs keep their playoff hopes alive. Carson Beck tosses two touchdowns, both to Oscar Delp, and rushes for another. Beck played mistake-free football. Consider he had multiple turnovers in four straight games coming in, and it was the freshman Nate Frazier in the fourth quarter who made it a two-score game as Georgia wins it, beating Tennessee 31-17. Georgia's now won eight straight meetings against the Vols, each by 14 or more points. CBS Sports HQ is built by the Home Depot. How doers get more done. A whole new Saturday tour takes us to Athens between the hedges at Sanford Stadium. Welcome in Josh Pate. And Josh, I'm not sure who that quarterback was for Georgia. Uh, who was that guy? I have a sheet of paper in my hand, Hakeem, and it's a little dew-ridden, but it says... Well, it says some stuff that I thought we'd see in the preseason, but then we didn't see it during the season. Um, you were waiting for it, weren't you? I was waiting for it. We just kept waiting for that. And everybody knew, I think you and I both knew, if we get that version of him, you know, him being Carson Beck, if we get that, do they can beat anyone. Well, we got it tonight, and they're down 10-0. I'll tell you, honestly, it felt a lot like when we were in Baton Rouge last week. And Bama goes in there and shuts them up early. And that's how this game started. Difference is LSU never answered and they got body bagged. And Georgia answers tonight emphatically. And um, in the process, Hakeem, they couldn't run the ball all that well. Uh, they still had some drops. They still had some issues that they've struggled with. And Carson Beck just overcomes it all and plays in a manner that if you were to duplicate that several weeks over weeks, you would have a Heisman Trophy winner. Hasn't been that way so far, but who cares? They got the win tonight and now Everything, every preseason goal still in front of them. What does it say about this offense? And, and Kirby Smart said that Carson Beck ran it beautifully on this night. They're without Trevor Etienne, their leading running back, their leading rusher. And you see a young guy, Nate Frazier, the freshman, step up yet again in a big spot. The thing that I saw here, Josh, was the fact that their last two scoring drives were those clock draining drives it's as if they were running this in a clinic the last two drives 12 plays 87 yards 7 minutes and 22 seconds the final drive that scored a touchdown 12 plays 92 yards 6 minutes and 21 seconds efficient is that what you saw yeah, lethal, man. That's Georgia football. Just because we haven't seen the vintage version of it this year doesn't mean if, if they dig down deep enough that it's not still there. I thought also, Hakeem, you touched on something there. Nate Frazier gave them everything that he could give them. I mean, they've been chronically banged up at the tailback position. Uh, they've also been turnover prone there and just came from Kirby's press conference. And I was, I was around them on Friday. I talked to him yesterday, and he said, Beck will probably have to run the ball a little bit this week, partly because he just should because he's a good enough athlete, and they challenged him Monday to do it. And then the other part is they don't have the ability to get the production on the ground in totality from their tailback position, uh, the likes of which they would normally be able to get so he lowered his shoulder a couple times picked up some tough yards like you would maybe expect Nico Yamaliava to do which he also did uh, just Carson Beck stepped up and then you couple that with the game he had through the air Hakeem there was a phrase that I kept using this week there was a phrase I could never shake that kept me on Georgia and that was competitive character um, there are all kinds of reasons why Tennessee could have won this game tonight there were all kind of matchups that I thought may be favorable to Tennessee they get up early there's just something about having to cut the head off the snake these best teams these best programs you have got to literally cut the head off the snake because as long as they are drawing breath even if it's late in November they could they could dig down deep they could find that version of themselves they could remember who they are they could get healthy uh, that's not what Georgia's doing but there's just man there are a few of them we talk about like this Georgia's definitely one of them the competitive character that's probably what I would assignate those kinds of drives to more than anything. Well, you don't just walk into Athens and get a win. Uh, they stretch their home winning streak to 29 in a row, longest active streak in FBS. What does this win mean now for Georgia as they keep their playoff hopes alive? I think they're very much alive. I think they'll just get thrown into that soup with the other two lost teams. I will say this, though, and, you know, we've known for a little while we're headed for sort of a bit of a crash here with a bunch of two lost teams and how many of the SEC's teams are going to get in. Uh, these coaches have become more emphatic week over week about talking about the level of play in this league this year. And I happen to agree with them. 
I think a lot of folks out there are conflating their maybe not being an elite team in the SEC with the SEC is down. I've seen all these teams on the road up close, Hakeem, many of them like Georgia multiple times. There's some pretty high-level football being played in this league, and I think the difference is for the you are what your record says you are crowd, uh, I don't belong to that crowd, but for that crowd, I think it would pay, man. It would pay to just come and check this out. Uh, go down to Baton Rouge, go to College Station when they play Texas. Uh, the, the depth and caliber of athlete on these rosters on a lot of these two-loss teams, I watch that, and then I go on the road and watch some ball out of this conference. I'm not trying to pump water for the SEC. They can do that themselves. I am telling you, though, that um, the caliber of play in this league and some of these teams that are going to be there fighting over those final spots with two losses, I think are very deserving, as these eyeballs have seen it compared to the rest of the country. Well, Georgia punches back in a game they had to have at home where they have now won 29 in a row. Josh Pate here on CBS Sports HQ breaking down for us. Josh, thank you. And of course, you want college football the way Josh delivers it. It is fun, it is informative, it's entertaining. Check out Josh Pate's college football show three times a week on YouTube, 8 Eastern time. You can also listen to the podcast version wherever you get your podcasts.